Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Ives number FS438 US10B dome stop. And one removed here from the packaging. You can use your imagination uh, and see why we would call it a dome stop. This is what is historically known as the high dorms dome stop. You got the short, you got the high, you got the small and the big. This is the big one or the tall one. Back in the old days, it was just the 438. Then at some point, Ives added these letters in the front. And I was like, why make me learn all new letters? Then I slowly realized, oh, FS for floor stop? Okay. WS for wall stop? Okay, I've got that. So 438 uh, is what this is. Um, the 436 or the FS 436 is the smaller version, uh, shorter. Uh, the lip length is probably, you know... 530 seconds thick, something like that. Don't quote me on that, please. Um, back uh, once upon a time, a contractor would walk in and say, okay, I've got 100 doors I need stops for. Let me have, um, I'm not sure how many I'm going to need. Let me have 60 shorts and let me have, um, you know, make it 70 shorts. Let me have uh, 50 talls and I'll return the ones that I don't need because I know I've got varying floor conditions. And it was always like, you know, return to me stuff that's going to be dusty and dirty. Um, but anyway, that's generally how that works out. So the dimensional properties of this floor stop, we'll hit that first, uh, is two and a quarter inch base diameter. They say oval. It doesn't appear to be oval. Well, it actually, does, it does appear to be oval. It's about two inch that way. And then about an inch and 13 sixteenths that way. This has a base height of nine sixteenths, closer to half inch. Then it has an overall height of inch and three eighths, yeah, closer to inch and a quarter. Um, so if you've got a base height of about half of an inch, that means your undercut's going to be nine sixteenths. Let's do that again. Uh, five eighths, maybe eleven sixteenths. You know, you you see that you run out of bumper at about an inch and a quarter there, right? Uh, so you're certainly not going to want to be any greater than a one inch undercut. You know, really three quarter undercut is what this is made for. Absolutely what this is made for. So 5 eighths, 11 sixteenths, 3 quarter, maybe 13 sixteenths. You're going to be able to handle that. But you get into a situation where you have a 3 quarter undercut and you're using the FS436. Just not enough height because the overall height on that I think is about 1 inch. Um, something in that range. It's going to include a fastener package. Uh, you're going to get a plastic anchor and then a wood screw along with that funny threaded bolt. That funny threaded bolt's going to go up. Through the hole in the bumper, it's going to thread into that area right there. And all that it's going to do is just um, prevent the stop from spinning. So when you do the installation, you'll locate it. You're going to mark your hole. You'll mark your other hole. Drill both holes. Insert your anchor into the anchor hole, and that sleeve, that smooth end, is just going to sit into the hole, and again, to keep it um, from from rotating on you. That's what it's for. This is going to be listed in lots of different finishes, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, let's switch to the screen view, where we can take a look at the extended description, along with the supporting documents and those other finishes. Okay, here is the item that we're looking at online, FS438. Let's take a look at the other finishes that we have listed here. US10 for satin bronze, US10B for oil rub bronze, US15 satin nickel, 26 for polished chrome, 26D satin chrome, 28 for aluminum, aluminum base material with a clear anodized finish. US3 for polished brass, US4 for satin brass, US5 for antique brass. It would be more appropriate to call all of these by their BHMA codes, 612, 613, 619, 625, 626. This would be considered 628. Um, 605, 606 would be better. And, and what I mean is the US number is the... Um, system that was put into place in about the very, very early 1930s or really late 1920s. 
if you were to look in a hardware catalog from 1925 or before, you're going to see the manufacturer have listed their um, a number for a finish and then some sort of a verbal description. Colombian antiqued uh, river bronze. You know, some really odd name for a, for a finish. Not odd, but unique to that manufacturer. Well, let's say that that was Sargent, but then you went to the Corbin catalog and you wanted to order a lock from them. Well, they didn't have a you know, Colombian antique river bronze or whatever it, I said. Um, so they didn't match. Well, at some point, the government, backed by industry, put together a task force, basically, that said, we need to standardize because it serves the public best interest. If I can order my hinges from here and order my locks from here and have it all US 10B, and we all know that that's oil rub bronze. The problem is the US system doesn't tell us the base material. So when I say 613, that means it's an oil rub finish. Let's back up. When I say US 10B, that means it's an oil rub bronze finish. But when I say 613, that means that it is an oil rub bronze finish on a bronze base material. So that allows me to be very specific with my base material. Uh, for instance, if I wanted oil rub bronze on a steel base material, that's 640. US 10B doesn't tell us the base material. And if you really wanted to do a deep dive on finishes, go to contact us, go to video gallery of all places, currently go to page two, and then do a find function for BHMA, and you will find the BHMA finish chart. And this will give you the, um, the goodness about what it all is. 613 is US 10B, 640, Plated oxidized satin bronze oil rub is US 10B. But one is steel, the other is bronze. Anyway, uh, let's not divert any further. This is the item that we are looking at. Extended description down below that we've talked about. The dimensional properties. 438 for doors with threshold or undercut. Heavy duty cast dome stops constructed of brass, bronze, or aluminum. Packed with wood screw and plastic anchor, that's true. Replaceable gray non-marring rubber bumper is available. By the time you're seeing this video, I hope to have a link to that replacement rubber bumper so that you can purchase those separately. They do fatigue with enough uh, work uh, use on them. You will go into a bathroom in a restaurant um, and you will see bumpers that are compromised or fatigued, especially if the undercut is excessive and there's a lot of weight hitting a small surface area. All right. Okay. Meets this ANSI A156.16 standard. Um, ANSI BHMA is the governing document when it comes to establishing a baseline or a governing document. Um, they're the governing organization that produces the governing documents so that we are all um, working under the same understanding um, of what is certified and what's not, I suppose. Um, oil rub bronze, made of brass. So it's probably why they don't call it US, uh, pardon me, 613, because it's not made of bronze. Um, now let's dive into the extended uh, the uh, supporting documents cut sheet. That's a neat little technical drawing of the material that we've just gone over. Not much to add here, but it's there for your review. Installation. That's a neat little technical drawing of the material we've just gone over. Um, have it there for your review. <laughs> okay. Uh, product brochure. FS438 right here dimensional properties its shorter cousin is here as a 3 16 height I said 530 or 5 uh, 530 seconds I think that's 1.156 maybe and um, 3 16 is 0.18 and then our base height of our 438 I'm gonna put my caliper on it because I wasn't, I'm not real confident that it was half inch. So the caliper is telling me 0.518. So yeah, not 916s, but just heavy on a half. 
and then that oval dimension we gave you. The finishes are listed here. Um, and then they have risers for this material. So if you have a carpet application like here, you know, rather than crushing down your <laughs> carpeting um, with a real tall unit, you're going to use a riser. You're going to modify the carpet condition, stick a riser underneath here, lift all that up, and you'll be as right as rain. Okay. Um, you do have to specify the height on the risers as they're available in different sizes. The uh, FS13, the FS17, you know, just newer variants of this material. Um, I don't really know why they evolved these additional dome stops into the product offering. Um, there must be a reason. I don't know what it is. They're so close, I don't know why you needed one that's a sixteenth smaller. There's obviously a reason. Completely round, they're a different shape. That would be number one. Um, it's a different shape, completely round. This one's really tiny, lip, completely round. Okay. Now, um, that covers everything about this stop. The link here to the manufacturer's page, that link is pretty handy because it will allow you to review not only all of the Ives products that we sell, but a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Other encyclopedic documents are here. Uh, that would be a technical manual. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I'm not sure why it's broken either. We'll fix that. Templates, which will give you some technical drawings. Uh, the pivot catalog from Ives. Ives has a nice line of pivots. If you are using pivots from uh, other very well-known name manufacturers, especially one, um, be mindful. Ives makes pivots as well. And I'm partial to the big name in the industry um, and the other lesser names. Ives, I, in my opinion, is a lesser known name, but you bump into it all the time with aluminum storefront. What I like about Ives is, and just assuming that it's, you know, uh, uh, you know, their, their center hung pivot, you know, this 7226 basically being an 0147 or a 147, you know, it's variations on a theme. What does set Ives apart is that their installation instructions are substantially more approachable than other manufacturers' pivots. So if it's your first uh, quarter in the jukebox, so to speak, or your first rodeo when it comes to pivots, you might want to take a look at the Ives pivot line and look at their installation instructions. It's a much more distilled um, version of an introduction to pivots. You look at something with more dimensions on it than, a, than the space shuttle, shuttle you know, blueprints. Uh, it's a bit intimidating. Ives doesn't operate that way. Okay. Um, let's wrap up this video on camera, but before we do, a couple of fun archival catalogs here. You want to see what Ives was doing in 1896. There's your catalog, literally 125 years old. Ives was a name synonymous with sash locks uh, and locking hardware for small doors, for doors, and for windows. Um, really a great resource right here um, if you're doing some sort of historical work or if you just want to see what existed back then at the turn of the 20th century. That's for fun. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Okay, in conclusion, nice quality item here from Ives. They've been making this for several decades. Um, you know, not much else to say about it. You need to stop a door somehow. Sometimes floor stops are the preferred uh, method of attack. You might have a wall that you can't pierce into. You might have a wall that you, the designer doesn't want you to pierce into or the owner. Um, you might have some, you know, really cool wallpaper or some sort of trim work or a design on the wall um, that's there and, or, or tile. And you just, you know, it's not appropriate to drill into the, uh, into the wall. Um, or vice versa, you might need a wall stop because you can't go into the floor because there's radiant heat, whatever the case is. Um, it's trim and auxiliary hardware. It's meant to control doors, and Ives has a complementary offering of, of, of material of that nature. In addition to their pivots, they have pin and barrel hinges, and they have aluminum continuous geared hinges as well, which is a relatively new um, add-on product from Ives. Historically, Ives certainly did not carry pivots and, and pin and barrel hinges. We just did a project uh, for some very heavy doors 
3-0, 8-0, 14-gauge, steel stiffened, hung those on Ives, pin and barrel hinges, worked just great. Electric transfer, in fact, uh, on the active door. Uh, neat little stuff. Any questions on the Ives FS438 in the US 10B finish or any other Ives product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.